Hey y'all, today's video is going to be all about what I packed for my husband's lunchbox for his five-day work week. So I'm going to start off this video a little bit different since I'm doing the drinks differently. Um, for this week, I just put in a case of water and a half a case of pop directly in his truck. And I wanted to show y'all this iceless cooler that I recently bought for him. I am not sponsored in any way. We did our own research on this. I paid for it with my own money, but he has really been loving it. So that's why I wanted to make a point to show y'all, but it holds quite a bit it plugs right into his truck to keep it running and he said that it works really well and keeps his drinks nice and cold so there's his um drinks for his work week so his first lunch i'm gonna make him some turkey bacon ranch croissants in the oven so these are the croissants that i buy i picked them up at the walmart bakery and they are so good for so many different things and i decided to just make the whole batch because the kids are home for summer break so we all had these for lunch my son just had a cheese one but regardless this is what we all had so i started by spreading a layer of ranch on the top part of the croissant um, i picked up a half a pound of some turkey oven roasted turkey from the Kroger Deli. I got it really thinly sliced and just piled that on there. I'm also going to do a slice of sharp cheddar cheese per croissant and I also fried up a whole package of bacon and what I don't use for this I'll just put it in a Ziploc bag, store it in the refrigerator and I can pull it out for anything I need for the week that calls for bacon. So anyways, I did two slices of bacon per croissant and I am going to be individually wrapping each one in some tin foil. It just works best for properly like heating it up. If you were to just put it on a cookie sheet without doing this, um, it would be really hard to melt the cheese, heat up the turkey without burning the croissant. So I cook those at 350 for 15 minutes and I'm also going to be making him some keto Cheez-Its for the first time. We're not on a keto diet or anything. I've just been really wanting to make this because it's one ingredient and it sounded really good, looked easy. You need ultra thin cheese slices and I will say these were extremely hard to like get apart without breaking them. So that was the only like annoying thing about this recipe. So off camera, I took the time, I was patient and I pulled apart six slices and then I just simply sliced those into little cheese it shapes. So um, I put out a piece of parchment paper onto a large baking sheet and I'm just getting those spread out on there. And those are going to go in the oven at 250 degrees for 30 minutes. And they should be nice and golden brown just like this. And you want to let them completely cool down because that's what's going to really crisp them up. And y'all, these were so delicious. Um, so now I'm going to start putting together his little container so i'm gonna add some pepperonis and then in this little divider section i gave him a good amount of those cheez its that i just made i'm also going to give him some fresh cantaloupe that i just cut up of course i made a big mess per usual but this one was so good and sweet cantaloupe is so good in the summertime i also decided to throw in a little toothpick just to make those easier to pick up and i'm also going to throw in one of these chobani flip yogurts and um, this is the perfect peach cobbler um, and I'm also, of course, going to give him a spoon to go with it. So now for the turkey bacon ranch reveal. These were so good. Um, this would also be good for like a quick dinner. Super quick. Um, I also wanted to mention that I am going to be reusing that tin foil that I cook these in. I'm just going to fold those up and place them in his lunchbox. That way, if he wants to reheat these when it's time to eat them, because I did do this like the day before. Um, he can just wrap those back up and heat it up in his Hot Logic lunchbox. Next up, I'm going to grab a loaf of French bread and I'm just going to take a long serrated knife and get that split in half. I'm only going to be using half of it on this day and I will just store the other half in the freezer. I can pull that out for a quick lunch for the kids whenever I want to. I'm also going to grab a jar of Alfredo sauce. I am going to be making a BLT chicken alfredo french bread pizza so i'm just taking quite a few spoonfuls and i'm just layering that over the bread and spreading it out i definitely added a little bit too much we do like things saucy but this was like literally dripping off the sides as you can see um, so i'll cut back on that next time but 
I also just have a rotisserie chicken that I picked up from Walmart. When I get those home, I just shred those up, can pull it out for whatever I need. So I just layer that over the Alfredo sauce. And I'm also gonna grab a few strips of that bacon that I had already cooked up. It was already stored in the fridge. So I'm just taking that same serrated knife and chopping that up into small pieces. And I'm just gonna layer that all over the top of the chicken. I also went ahead and diced up just a small Roma tomato. And I'm only adding that to half of the French bread because I did also serve this to my kids and I knew that they would not eat it if it had that on there. I'm also going to add some fresh spinach that I just did a quick chop on. Again, just a half of it. And then lastly, I'm just going to layer it with some shredded mozzarella cheese. Um, it definitely did not want to stay on top of that spinach. It was just kind of rolling off, but it did all work out in the end. So I got that transferred on over to my cookie sheet, and I'm going to bake that at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. So while that was in the oven, I'm going to get everything else laid out. So I did make him this suddenly pasta salad earlier in the day. So I'm just adding a good amount of that to this little glass container that comes with the lid. Um, pasta salads is always a hit in his lunch boxes. Um, but in the summertime, it's especially good, I can imagine, since it's so hot out. It's nice to have something cold. Um, and then I also cut him up some fresh strawberries. I'm just getting that added to this smaller dish. And I decided to sprinkle over a little bit of brown sugar just to give it a little special touch. And we've just been liking that combination here lately. I also came across these Chex Mix bars. I personally never seen them before. This is in the cookies and cream flavor. I knew that he would love that, so I'm gonna include one of those. So by the time I got that done, the French bread was ready to be pulled out of the oven. So that's what it looks like once everything is nice and melted. And I just sliced it into large pieces just to make it a little bit easier to eat and also just to make it fit into this little container. But there it is. I think that looks really appetizing. He really, ended up enjoying it. And lastly, I just have to include the fork for the pasta salad. Next up, I'm gonna be packing up some leftovers from dinner for his lunchbox. So I'm just gonna quickly include that recipe because I didn't film it for a dinner video or anything. It is literally the most easiest crock pot recipe ever. I'm sure most of y'all done know all about it, but it is one of my kids like all time favorite dinners. So in a crock pot, I just add two chicken breasts, one packet of taco seasoning, a can of black beans, a can of corn. I did drain and rinse both of those. And then lastly, just grab a jar of your favorite salsa and pour in about half of the jar. I'm gonna add a lid and I'm gonna let that cook on low for about four hours. And then once that chicken is done, I'm just gonna take two forks and shred up that chicken. I hope y'all cannot hear the cars outside right now. That is so loud. Sorry about that. Um, but you can also use an electric hand mixer to make that go quicker. And here's what you're left with. It is really good, super simple, very few ingredients. And you can use it in so many different ways, but we love to use it for burrito bowls. So I just cooked up a big pot of some plain white rice. I added some of that to the bottom of this meal prep container and I'm just topping it with a good amount of that chicken mixture. And um, I put some shredded cheese on the top and I'm just gonna loosely cover it, set it to the side. Um, we went and ate dinner and then I came back to it, which is right now. As you can see, the cheese is nice and melted. Now I wanna get all of the toppings ready. So I got these meal prep containers from Kroger. It came in like a pack of 10 and it comes with one of these little sauce containers that fits perfectly in the top of the lid, which I love. So I just filled that with some taco sauce since we like to drizzle that over our burrito bowls. So just kind of showing you all the setup there. And then in this little four divided, section container. I'm going to add a little bit of chopped lettuce, um, some chopped tomatoes. I didn't show it, but I did eventually go in and season those tomatoes with a little salt and pepper. I added a lime wedge so he can squeeze that over everything. And then lastly, just some sour cream so he can add all of that to his bowl once he is ready to eat it. And then since that is a pretty filling heavy lunch, I'm gonna keep the sides simple. I'm just gonna throw in a banana and another one of these Chobani Flip yogurts. This is the peanut butter cup one. This is like his number one favorite one. Up 
up next, I'm going to be making some little ham and cheese cherry tomato skewers. I found this pack of mini skewers on Amazon for a really good price. So I'll link that in the description box just in case any of you are interested. But this is the cheese that I'm going to be using. It's the Cracker Barrel Vermont White Sharp Cheddar Cheese. And I'm just going to take it and simply cut it into cubes. Um, I definitely need to invest in like a cheese cutter that comes with the string. That would make that go a lot smoother and quicker. Definitely took a lot of pressure to cut through that cheese, but I also really need to sharpen my knives. Regardless, I got it chopped up, and if you have never had this cheese before, it is delicious. So now that I've got that done, I can start assembling the skewers. So I washed my cherry tomatoes, of course, and I'm gonna start with that. And then I'm gonna add on a cheese cube. And as you can see, this particular cheese did not work too well with the skewer. I guess it's just a little bit too fancy. I wouldn't use this particular cheese with the skewers again. Um, they were just wanting to fall right off, but I finally got the hang of it. And then I'm just gonna start layering the ham. So I got this ham cut at the Kroger Deli as well. Um, it's some black forest ham and I got it thinly sliced. So I did about four to five slices of ham per skewer. And as you can see, I'm just taking it and kind of folding it and um, just threading it onto that skewer. So I'm gonna add another piece of cheese um that one crumbled go figure so it's gonna repeat it i just had to work with what i had it was all good in the end and i'm gonna seal the deal with a final cherry tomato i think these look super cute it's basically like an adult lunchable but it's just funner and you know i like to keep things interesting i don't want him to get too bored um, and I did end up doing two more of those, so looks super nice. He ended up really loving those. And I'm also going to make a quick egg salad to go with it. He really likes egg salad. So I just cooked up three eggs. I hard boiled those, and I just gave those a quick chop, added them to this bowl, and then I whipped out my Duke's mayo. I'm doing like a heaping spoonful of that. I'm also going to do a good amount of some mustard. We really like the tanginess of that. And like a heaping tablespoon of some dill relish, just a little bit of salt, a lot of black pepper. Gave it a good stir at that point, and then I decided that I also wanted to go in and add some paprika, just like what I would do with deviled eggs. This is basically like a bunch of deviled eggs chopped up, but I'm going to get that transferred on over to this divided container. He really likes Ritz crackers with his egg salad, so I gave him like half a sleeve of these garlic butter ones, and I almost always serve it with some pickles on the side, so I just added a few of those to a little snack size, a Ziploc bag, sealed it up that way nothing will leak onto the crackers, and that's almost always how I serve his egg salad up. I also made some homemade chocolate peanut butter no-bake cookies, so I gave him two of those, and yes, it's in a leftover Halloween bag from one of the kids' parties. It was the first thing I saw when I opened the Ziploc drawer, but I am going to include that cookie recipe in case you've never had it before. I want to show you how simple it really is. So to a large pot, I'm going to melt down a stick of salted butter. I'm going to add in two cups of granulated sugar, a half a cup of milk, and four tablespoons of some unsweetened cocoa powder. Now that I'm editing, editing this, I realize I could have just done a quarter cup. That would have been a little quicker, but it's all good. So I'm going to get all of this stirred together really good. I'm just going to continuously stir it until it's nice and smooth and silky and that butter's completely melted. I do have it on a medium temperature and you want this to come up to a rolling bowl. I kept this in real time to just show you what I mean. I wait for those bubbles to completely cover the entire surface of the pot and at this point is when I set a timer. Um, I set a timer for exactly one minute and as soon as that timer goes off you want to remove it from the heat it is important to follow that instruction or else they won't sit upright so you want to have the last few ingredients already measured out because you got to kind of move quickly at this point because it's going to start setting up so it's a cup of creamy peanut butter three cups of some quick oats and then just a splash of some vanilla extract that is it i'm just going to get this stirred together good you want that peanut butter to be melted and for all of those oats to be incorporated so it should look something like that. Lastly, you just want to pull out a big strip of wax paper, lay it out on your countertop, and then just take a big spoonful and just drop these down. It's as simple as that. You want to leave these just untouched on your countertop for at least 20 to 30 minutes just to allow those to set up. But these are absolutely delicious.
for the last lunch in this video, I'm going to make him a bacon cheeseburger bowl. So in a hot skillet, I've added a half a pound of some ground beef. I'm just getting that chopped up. And when it was almost done, I seasoned it with some of this Mr. Steak Super Blend seasoning. I'm pretty sure I got this at a Bass Pro Shop a while back. And it's basically like a salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder mixture, which is what I pretty much always do for my ground beef anyways. I'm sure there's some extra things in there, but I really like that seasoning. So after I got that added, I just stirred it all around, drained the grease, let it finish cooking. And now I'm going to flavor it up like a cheeseburger. So I'm drizzling in some ketchup, mustard, and some Worcestershire sauce. That is it. Um, I just got all of that combined. And then I'm going to hit it with some of that cooked bacon that I prepped earlier in the week. So I added three strips, chopped it up, cooked it in with the beef for a couple of more minutes. So I'm going to be using this salad bowl to hold everything. So in the bottom part of the bowl, I'm going to add the bacon and ground beef mixture. I can add that divider piece on top and that is where I'm going to store all of the toppings. So you can put anything in here that you think would go good on a cheeseburger. I kept it simple with what I had. So I'm adding some of that lettuce and chopped tomatoes that I already had prepped from the burrito bowls. And I also took some slices of dill pickles and chopped that up. Um, that's always good in this. Uh, that's personally one of my favorite burger toppings, but Josh loves it too. And I'm also going to add a good handful of some shredded cheese. Here, I'm just seasoning those tomatoes with a little bit of salt and pepper to make those pop. And then lastly for the burrito, or not the burrito bowl, the cheeseburger bowl, I'm going to make a quick burger sauce. I just did a little mayo, ketchup, mustard, relish, onion and garlic powder, Worcestershire sauce, and some more of that super blend seasoning. I made this in like less than two minutes. Super simple. Stir it together good. And that is it for the cheeseburger bowl. So I had four ripe avocados in my refrigerator. So I decided to make some guacamole, which honestly, I shouldn't even call this guacamole. I know this is not how you actually make it. This isn't how I usually do guacamole but this is how we've been doing it recently and I've discovered that Josh likes it this way better I don't think he's big on cilantro like I am so basically I just got all of my avocados into this bowl and I'm going to be adding the juice of two limes if you don't like love the lime juice flavor maybe cut that back to one but we really like extra lime flavor and this is also what's going to help slow down the browning process because if you work with avocados a lot you know they brown really quickly so so I don't do it that often for lunch boxes. But lastly, I'm just going to hit it with lots of garlic salt. So this version is just three ingredients. It's really quick to make. So I'm just taking the back of my fork and mashing those avocados up. Some people prefer it chunkier. We prefer it more on the smooth side. So once I got it to this consistency, it is done. It is so good with tortilla chips, the perfect chip dip. This would have also been really good with that burrito bowl if I would have thought of it sooner. But oh well, I gave him a good amount of that. And I'm also going to pull out the Tostito scoops. And I'm just going to get a good amount of those transferred on over to a little Ziploc bag. And he is good to go with his guacamole and chips. So lastly, I'm going to throw in one of these vanilla moon pies. This is one of the double decker ones. And this is one of those treats that I tend to forget about. But they've been around a long time and they are really good. So that is all I got for y'all in today's video. I really do hope this video was helpful for anyone out there who is looking for some different lunchbox ideas. I try to keep it interesting but simple at the same time. Josh loved every single one of these lunches that I packed for him this week. So if you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sure y'all heard my kids screaming in the background while I've been trying to edit this. So thank you for bearing with me. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.